Hey guys, welcome to the channel. And today I'm gonna do something a little different. Um, we're actually here in my office and this little bookcase here I made earlier and you can see that video up here, um, but I made it earlier for uh, Warhammer um, little miniatures and it had slide out, pull out drawers. But um, I found that those miniatures when we paint them up and they have all that uh, detail and both my son and I do this, um, that we ended up with a lot of dust on them and they always had to be clean. So I bought some containers for them to fit in so that they're covered and we're storing them that way. So I'm changing what this is. And so there's still gonna be a bookcase. You can see that I added some book games and I also play war games. So I added some of those into this cabinet here. And what I'm gonna do is where I'm sitting at, I'm actually gonna make a countertop that's gonna go across here out of melamine. And that's gonna be my playing table for these games. And then back here, you see a little rail for a camera. Uh, that's going to be back there to videotape that because I do have another channel on the Wargaming. And it's just called Nerd Workshop instead of Mad Nerd Workshop. What I'm going to do today is show you how to go about putting together a simple top for something like this. And this is going to allow me to have storage space back here where we're actually going to put all those containers with the uh, Warhammer figures in them back here. They're going to be hidden underneath here. This will be covered with uh, plexiglass, which holds down the maps underneath that you play a play surface. And then, like I said, I'm going to show you how to work with melamine. And melamine is just a particle board that is covered with uh, plastic on both sides, a plastic uh, coating. It makes for a really durable surface. Now, because we're using particle board, um, this distance here, the, there's only going to be about 12 inch di distance here and here. but this distance along here is, is a long distance not to have any support. So I'm gonna make a couple legs here, a leg here, a leg at this end, and one right in the middle that will support that table. And they're gonna be the exact same height as this cabinet right here. So let's head on out to the shop and uh, start working on that. But before we do, please do like and subscribe. Like the video if you like it. Uh, give, please feel free to give comments below as to what you think. And uh, the subscriptions help out the channel quite a bit. So. Please don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button. You'll be able to see all the other crazy stuff that I start doing as I change hobby from hobby to hobby, it seems like. Let's go out to the shop. All right, guys, so here we are in the shop, and this is my piece of melamine here. This is going to be my, my top for the bookcase in there and the playing table. And I already had it cut to length and width uh, at the big box store. And uh, generally, I don't do that because, number one, their, their blade is not the sharpest there. And... Um, the people are very nice, and the gentleman was very nice to help me, but um, they're not 100% accurate. For example, um, I gave them specific sizes. I wanted uh, 31 and a half inches and 63. And fortunately, I always leave a little bit extra if I'm gonna have them cut it, just to make sure that you know it doesn't get really messed up. And the main reason I haven't cut it is so I can put it in my car where I don't have to take my trailer and put a big old you know hassle with a four by eight sheet especially when I'm by myself. He made accurate measurements, but the only thing was that he, where he put his measurement, he cut on the inside of that line. So basically it's an eighth inch short this way and an eighth inch short that way, which is no big deal because like I said, this is a countertop, or not a countertop, but a, this is a top for my um, bookcase. And I have it a little bit oversized, so I'm not worried about you know it being 100% accurate. Now, the bad thing about using a dull blade um, on melamine is the fact that it, makes these chip outs right there on this white so you see that and all these edges we're going to put some tape across here some heat sensitive tape or heat activated tape i should say uh, that will go across here and that's going to give it the same finish as what you have up here now you're going to see these little um, and you'll see them close up when i'm doing the tape and you'll see what i'm talking about but these little chip outs we're going to see them generally if i was using this for my cabinets or something i would have you know manhandled that four by eight sheet home and uh, I would have done, done it on my own table saw or most likely with my panel saw because the panel saw gives it a nice clean cut. It has a nice sharp blade with plenty of teeth. Uh, if I did it on a table saw, again, I would use something with a lot of teeth. And what I would also do, I would use a zero clearance insert on the saw blade so that that way as the blade comes down, it makes clean cut on this side. And on top, I'd take a two inch wide piece of masking tape and run it down where I'm gonna cut it, and that would prevent it from chipping out on top. So that I get two nice clean cuts, both on top and bottom, so that when I put the melamine tape on it, it looks clean. 
But in this case, I wasn't worried about it. Uh, the main reason is that once I get the tape on here, I have this little trim piece here that I'm gonna put all around it. And this trim piece is gonna go all around the table and I'm gonna have a piece of plexiglass that sets down that's gonna hold the plexiglass in place. So when I play the games, I lift up the plexiglass and I slide a map or you know whatever my playing surface is underneath and I put the plexiglass down and I play on top of the plexiglass. And I'll show you that when, it, when it's all done. Now, one of the things I will do is I will um, drill out a hole someplace in this table so that I can just easily reach under and pop up the plexiglass on my finger. And most likely it'll be at the far end of uh, most likely that end over there because when it sets at the cabinet, I have an open in on one end, so I want to make sure that's easy to get to or easy to access. So this will uh, surround the whole table so you never see that chip out. It will have chip out on the bottom, but nobody's going to be looking there, so I'm not worried about that. Now the other thing too is that I talked about the length this way, this width here. This part, only about this much overhang, so it's not really going to hurt it too much, but I still want some support on these ends. And so what I did, again, these, these edges will all be um, uh, laminated with that uh, heat activated tape, but I, I made pieces like this that will make these corners and they will go in this corner and that corner and then one will go in the center right here. And uh, these will be my legs and these are already cut. And I just ripped these out on the table saw here and these are already cut the length so that they match that bookcase height perfectly. So that way once these all get on there, um, all I gotta do is just screw them. I'll screw them in first because this is going to go over the screw holes because where, where this is going to join uh, that's where the screw is going to show up on the top part of the table and then this will go and cover that up so this little trim piece covers up quite a bit so i'll put all the legs on first and i get everything all set to go and then when i just take it in there basically all i'm going to have to do is just set it right on top of that cabinet because the bookcase is going to come from here to 13 14 inches to there and then these are going to hold it up there and, and all it's got to do is just rest on top so if i ever change my mind or want to move it around or do something else i can easily just make that adjustment so that's my plan for all of this uh, let me show you how to work with melamine and let's go ahead and uh, get some tape on all these edges and i'll show you that process it's really a quick and simple process that anybody can do let's check it out all right, here are some of the tools that you need for taping the melamine tape, and that would be the iron there. You needed a set about cotton, a pair of dikes to cut the ends, a file to file down the ends, trim it up. Of course, your tape, you're gonna need a roll of tape, and some acetone and a rag to clean up afterwards. But that is all that's involved in this process. First step is we wanna cut the tape to the proper length. Make sure you have a little bit of overhang. You don't need much, but make sure you have some because it does, will move as you um, move the iron across there. And that's why it's always a good idea to get more than what you need. Because when you have excess, you don't mind leaving a little bit at the end. When you're running short, you try to cut it as close as possible. It doesn't always work. Nice even iron across there, as even as you can get. Again, my fingers are going on both sides to line it up correctly. Make sure that it stays in the middle of the board. You see, I can see that if I want, when I press the iron down, I could actually move it back and forth. So when you come back for your second pass, you want to make sure that it's all lining up. Be careful that that stuff gets hot. And you want to let it cool down a little bit before you start doing the other stuff. So the other method you can use is just with a knife, which, sorry, I don't know how to do this without trying to be as safe as possible and just push down. That will get you a nice clean cut across there also. If you don't like using the file. That's, that was much easier for right hander. Okay. Then we come back. Our 
acetone. So because this is a leg, all I need to do is one side of this leg, the other side, and then the part that goes at a 45, I just need to cap one end, one uh, edge. So now when they go together, they'll go together like that. So we have a finished side here, here, and on the other side here. And that gives us our finished legs. Okay, so the legs are gonna go together like this. And I'm gonna use some thick CA because I think thick CA might have the best chance of sticking to the melamine. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's my logic. And that's what I'm doing. I know wood glue doesn't stick very well because I have melamine on my desk here, on my um, countertop here, and the glue doesn't stick to that. Clamp these together, drill a small pilot hole, Oop, that one went too far. use inch and a half screws but before I do that I'm gonna put some thin CA down in the holes because what that's gonna do is that's gonna go ahead and seal up the wood around the screws and give it a better grasp so that's my plan is to make it so that that seals up all that particle board around the screw and it's going to be a nice solid grip. It's not unusual to use thin CA for screw holes to, to toughen up the wood around there. But that is how we put together our legs. Just a matter of making the 45 degree cuts now. Drilling the access hole, I laid a piece of wood underneath it. So it's a nice clean cut. Okay, everybody, here's my finished uh, table. And like I said in the beginning, this is for war gaming. We have uh, these games and we have maps and we don't want to destroy the maps, they're paper maps, so we put them underneath plexiglass and then we move our pieces across the top here. So this is a very, very simple build. As a matter of fact, this is just sitting right on top of the, uh, the previous bookcase. I made these legs the exact same height as this bookcase. So everything fits across there really well. Um, I may, you know, if I, if it moves around too much, which I don't think it will, I mean, I'm, I'm leaning on it, moving it, it's not too bad, but if it does um, move a little bit, what I may do is at both ends, just lift it up and put a little bit of hot glue there and push it down and that'll lock it in enough to, you know, you know to hold it in place. But um, I have plenty of storage room back here. I have, uh, you know, this much storage room up to this height, uh, all the way back there. So 
all of my uh, miniatures are there. I'll have some other stuff. I have my camera rig here, which is going to allow me to film uh, my games as I'm, as I'm doing them. And uh, this is all remote controlled. Uh, I got a monitor there, which I'll have sitting down on that end. Uh, I'll be able to see everything that's going on. A really fast build, a simple build. Uh, nothing too complicated, but um, one of the things I do like about woodworking, you know, this this, um, this may not be your thing, but um, the thing I enjoy about woodworking is that it keeps up with all of my hobbies. As my hobbies change, I can adapt the stuff that I made. So, for example, this bookcase was originally made for miniatures with a rollout shelf. Um, I found that, that didn't quite work as well for me. As a matter of fact, all of these shelves that come out, that rolled out, I'm making them into cases now to hold those miniatures so that, that way it keeps the dust out and it keeps them nice and clean and allows me to carry them yeah, if I want to go over my sons to play or, or you know he comes over here and he wants to borrow some it makes it easy for us to transport them but um, I hope you enjoyed that if you did please give the video a like and uh, please do subscribe to the channel I have some more stuff in the works uh, that I'll be releasing soon so I appreciate you watching until next time take care